Guard and control your thoughts. They are the gate to your mind and soul. What thoughts enter your mind during the day? Does your mind run on autopilot? Or are you watching and judging the thoughts that enter? Hey, this is Pastor Brian Holmes with Empowered Christian Ministries, here with another lesson from our Driveway Discipleship Program. Lesson number 11, your gate. Guard and control your thoughts. They are the gate to your mind and soul. Let me ask you this question. What thoughts enter your mind during the day? Does your mind run on autopilot? Or are you watching and judging the thoughts that enter? Your thoughts are the gate to your mind and soul. In a previous lesson, we looked at how our thoughts are the entry point, which then grow into beliefs, feelings, behavior, and finally, identity. If we don't critically examine our thoughts and control them, harmful thoughts can enter, progress, and seriously hinder our faith and walk with Jesus. Examine the four places thoughts come from. The following diagram comes from my book, Driveway Discipleship. You can get a copy of it at empoweredchristian.org forward slash driveway dash discipleship. See, these thoughts come from one of four different sources. We'll examine each one in a minute. But first, I want you to picture a square divided into four separate equal sized squares. Two on the top, two on the bottom. The top two squares are sources of good, helpful, and beneficial thoughts. The bottom two squares are sources of bad, detrimental, and harmful thoughts. The two squares on the left are sources of thoughts that are supernatural, external influences that come from outside of us. These thoughts come into our mind from another's mind. They're not our thoughts. They don't originate from within us. The two squares on the right are sources of natural, internal thoughts that do come from within us. The top left square is God via the Holy Spirit. These are thoughts that come from God to the born-again Christian by the Holy Spirit now living within. These thoughts teach, they lead, and guide us into all truth. They mature our faith and our relationship and develop our godliness. God reveals his will for us to trust and obey him. These thoughts will always be in accord with his already revealed and inspired word, the Bible. These thoughts will always glorify God and be God, Christ, or gospel-centered. The bottom left square is Satan and all his demonic forces. You see, these thoughts come from our enemy, and they teach lies, provoke rebellion to God, they try to destroy our faith, provide sinful temptations, and cause uh, or influence further brokenness and suffering. See, their objective is to mislead humanity, build their own satanic kingdom, and destroy the church. The top right square is our flesh, the natural, neutral, or sometimes good aspects of our human nature and free will. This is the part of us being led by the human conscience. These thoughts are natural, neutral, uh, and they'll come from within ourselves, and they'll be related to our physical body and soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, and our desires. See, these thoughts are of non-sinful desires, goals, behaviors, and identities that are still nonetheless worldly and temporary and human-centered. The, the bottom right square is our flesh, the broken aspects of our fallen human nature led by sinful desires, 
goals, behaviors, and identities, and those of the world, which are all corrupted by sin and demonic influence. Guard your thoughts. You see, the first step in learning how to control your thoughts is to guard them in the first place. Whenever a thought pops into your mind, examine it. Study, prepare, and discipline yourself now beforehand so that you can know, recognize, and reject 100% of those thoughts that are coming from Satan and the demons. These are outside attacks. They are not your thoughts. So you don't need to repent for them or to ask God for forgiveness. Just rebuke them and the source of where they come from and declare the biblical truths about God, the gospel, your new identity in Christ, etc. Jesus demonstrates how to do this in Matthew chapter 4 during his own temptation by Satan in the wilderness. Next, there are those thoughts that are embraced by the sinful world around us and those that come from the broken and sinful desires of your own heart, mind, and body. These are a part of your own sin nature, so they will be coming from within you. See Matthew 15 verses 19, verse 19 for more on this. So you can repent and ask forgiveness for these thoughts if part of you desires and enjoys them. But more importantly, you need to do the following three things with these sinful thoughts that come from within. First, seek to immediately recognize them as sinful and then intentionally reject them, cast them out of your mind as soon as they enter. Second, in those moments, quickly give them to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to remove them and to replace them with thoughts that glorify God and empower you to become more like Jesus. Third, let the prayer of your heart be that he sanctifies and brings healing to that part of your sin nature, taking away your desire and your enjoyment of sin, and to replace it with godly values, identities, and desires. Lastly, there are those thoughts that come from the natural and neutral parts of your flesh. These may include things like health, family, food, shelter, career, finances, life goals, hobbies, etc. See, these aren't bad, but they're not best. These thoughts are still human-centered, temporary, and passing away. In Matthew 16, verse 23, Jesus said to Peter, who at that moment was being led by Satan, you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. You need to limit your focus on these man-centered things, because even though they're not sinful, they're still worldly and can quickly become selfish and contrary to the will of God. Submit and direct your thoughts. As Philippians 4 teaches, you need to intentionally deny all anxiety and commit to having a continuous posture of gratitude towards God, an ongoing lifestyle of prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, and practice of godliness will ensure that the God of peace is always with you. Then, as Philippians 4, 7 says, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If we guard our thoughts, then God will guard our hearts and minds. So, allow only flesh thoughts that are good and beneficial. But foremost, desire those thoughts coming from the Holy Spirit. Focus your mind and heart on those thoughts that produce the fruit of the Spirit and force your flesh to be in submission to and led by 
the Spirit. As verse 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says, we need to take every thought captive. To obey Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as it says in Romans 12 verse 2, help me not to be conformed to this world or my own flesh nature, but to be transformed by the renewing of my mind so that I can walk in your good and perfect will. Help me as Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, to guard my heart with all diligence, for from it flow springs of life. Sanctify my heart wholly. Guide and empower my thought life. In Jesus' name, amen.